Welcome to AET Systems video series. Today we're going to be looking at dry lubricants and wet lubricants. So wet lubricants are very common. We think of them engine oil, hydraulic oil, greases. Dry lubricants are a little bit different and a little bit less common. They would be graphite, um, Teflon, molybdenum disulfate, and the new kit on the block is kind of ceramic. So they, they all have different uh, specialized applications, but what we wanna look at today is how they work under temperature. So engine oil um, has a good temperature rating and provides the lubrication for your engine, but it is a little bit limited. And a lot of times, and specifically in the last 20 years, a lot of companies have been adding different dry lubricants to engine oil to get a very desired re uh, effect. And one of the additives they use is Teflon. So what we're gonna do today <clears throat> to just show you how they act under higher temperatures, we're gonna put Teflon, some engine oil, some it's fully synthetic PAO engine oil, so it's a very good quality engine oil, and then some ceramic. Um, on this hot plate, we're gonna get it up to about 500 degrees Fahrenheit, um, 240 Celsius. So it's not super, super hot. Um, it's a temperature that would be pretty um, easy to see in an, in an engine. During combustion, we see temperatures rise for a very short peak all the way up to about 1500 degrees Celsius. Um, so 500 Fahrenheit, 240 Celsius isn't um, out of the realm. So what I'm going to do is we have Teflon here. It's industrial grade um, lubrication Teflon. We're just going to go and pull some out. Put it on our hot plate. Now the hot plate I got on, we'll shoot the temp gun at it here in a second, um, just to see kind of where it comes up to. Should be about 475 um, up to about 500. So on the outside edge there, we've got the Teflon. In the middle here, we have the ceramic. And then uh, I'm just going to go and put a little engine oil right here. And I'm not going to put too much. Um, if you've ever been cooking with oil, you know probably what's going to happen here. And I'll just put that on the outside edge there um, where it wants to sit. So now we'll go ahead and we'll condition and shoot this with the temp gun. We're about at 300. Um, so it's still on the way up. It won't take too long to get up to temperature. So what I'm going to do here is just move these over a little bit um, so they have all about the same heating. We can actually see already at about 325, the engine oil start to put off a little bit of smoke and discolor. Now that doesn't mean that it's failed, um, it just means that it's stressing a little bit and actually if I took this screwdriver here and just kind of worked around there's still a very very good lubrication film on there it's providing good lubrication yet and that's important because you know in an engine you have a very peak high temperature but it's very isolated to the combustion chamber so you're using that engine oil to dissipate and transfer that heat out across the engine and get that overall temperature down A little bit more smoke coming off now. Um, I don't think we're going to see too much of a change yet. We'll shoot the TEP gun. Actually, the Teflon is uh, getting a little paste like when you go through here, it, it uh, presses down. Um, I don't think we'll see that with this ceramic. Yeah, the ceramic actually just kind of moves out of the way when you push it down. So why do we use solid particulate lubricants? Well, one of the reasons is they have very good metal adhesion. So in an engine, most of your wear comes when you start it because there's not a good lubrication film on all your engine components. That engine needs to be running to have that oil circulating. So what we do with a solid or nanoparticulate 
that has very good metal adhesion. We add that into the engine oil and that's able to coat and sit in the porous surface structure of that metal. And then even when that engine starts and the lubrication, the oil isn't flowing, you have lubrication because you have ceramic on ceramic or Teflon on Teflon. Um, but I think you're gonna see one of the, the interesting points here about Teflon in just a moment. We'll go ahead, we can see a lot more smoke coming off of that engine oil. Um, and that'd be pretty standard across the board at about 350 to 400. Um, the lubricating properties of that engine oil is gonna be a little bit thin. And we're gonna see that kind of degrade a little bit down until there's probably just a, a black spot on, uh, on this steel plate here. So we're at 440, uh, up to about 450. And so if you've ever taken a part of an engine, you've probably seen some oil following. So dark spots in the cylinder wall or on different things or in a bearing, um, we'll see that if the bearing gets hot and there's lubrication present, that lubrication will bake onto that surface. Um, and that's really what you don't want because anytime you change that surface, um, so if you're, you're adding on a lot of dimension to that surface, uh, tolerances are very tight and if you're altering that surface too much, you're actually gonna create more drag um, and more resistance. So you won't want any real visible forming. You want that metal adhesion on a very microscopic nano level. Um, not that you'd actually have a, a film on there that you could pull away. So the ceramic, um, again, we're just gonna go it's easy to see if you tap on it, you know, if it's if it's changing a lot in structure. And it, it doesn't seem to be really affected. Starting to see that engine oil um, get pretty dark. Still got pretty good oil filming though. Um, you know, so it's it's very stressed but it's providing a level of lubrication still. Now if we go into Teflon, um, I'm actually pressing quite, quite hard on it. Um, and it just, it's packing down. It's become almost paste-like. And this is actually one of the reasons that you saw Teflon kind of get phased out as an engine oil additive. It has the ability to bond, in a lot of cases, back to itself. Um, so you can get clumps. And what you don't want in your engine oil is a clump of anything, um, to be honest, because it's gonna create issues and, and where it's gonna get pressed together, it's gonna create more wear, more resistance, and more drag. Um, I'm gonna go kind of pile it back up. We'll do the same with the ceramic um, if we can. It's hard to describe the structure or the, I guess the texture of the particulate. So like the, the ceramic here, it's not bonding to itself. It's not getting clumpy. It's not paste-like. You can press down, you go right down to the steel, and the ceramic powder actually kind of flows back around it. It's very, very loose. It's not tight. And now it's important to remember what we have visually here is a large amount of nano ceramic and nano Teflon. So you wouldn't actually be able to structurally see this when it's added in as an engine oil additive. Um, it's going to be in very, very small amounts, and it's going to be you know, infused, emulsified in with, with the oil. So we can see now the engine oil has completely blackened. Um, there's still a little bit of lubrication film on there, uh, but for the most part, that oil has worked away. Now if we go to the Teflon, it's very, very paste-like. Um, and actually the amount that I had here. I had almost as much ceramic powder as I did Teflon, and you can see that the Teflon has 
really diminished. And you can actually see it looks like a wax layer. So if you took a piece of wax paper and put it on here, that's kind of what we're seeing with uh, Teflon. Now one of the reasons I decided not to put Molly up here was because it is kind of getting phased out as an engine oil additive. Um, and one of the reasons is it has issues with uh, increasing certain emissions. So I would actually expect that Molly kind of falls out of favor here in the short term as an engine oil um, additive. And for the most part it has already. We see Molly mostly in greases uh, because it has a good pressure rating as a solid lubricant. Now these two also have very good pressure tolerances. Um, ceramic has an excellent press pressure tolerance um, when compared to Molly or to Teflon. And it's very, very um, diverse in its application. So ceramic we can see good application in greases. We see very good application as a dry film lubricant or as a dry lubricant by itself. And we have excellent results um, when we use it in an additive as for engine oil or such. Um, it's very pressure resistant. It's extremely temperature resistant as we're seeing here. And it's very, very water resistant. So it bonds in its steel very well. And even if that steel, for example, that pin or bushing is getting pushed down in the water at maybe a steel mill or maybe in a digging application or on a dredge, um, that ceramic is still providing really good lubrication even though it might be down in the water. So let's just shoot a temperature here. We're actually a little higher than I anticipate. We're at about 550. Um, the ceramic, it's not pasty. It's pretty much for the most part the same as when we put it up there. I can't press it down and get it to kind of burn onto that steel. It just kind of pushes away. So let's go and look. We can see the, the Teflon has changed a lot. Um, and it's, oh, that's interesting. It's actually like a wax, a wax sheet. It's gotten to be a, a clump. And that's something you wouldn't want in your engine oil. That's something you definitely wouldn't want in a high temperature application. It's like a, it's like a candle wax right now. Um, and there I tried to push it actually just kind of jumped out of the way so it's, it's, it's gotten quite hard so it's a very interesting very simple test I mean you could do this at home and just see how they kind of react under different temperatures um, and we could do another test where we could dissolve them or emulsify them a dry lubricant into a wet lubricant like engine oil and see what the result is so that'll probably be the next video we do so stay tuned for that if you have any questions, let us know. If you have any tests we want to do or you'd like to see us do, um, let us know as well. Thank you for tuning in. See you next time.